What's up, disco pants? What's up, blur, blur, blob? <laughs> nice energy level. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was what you were saying when we were shopping today. Oh, yeah, how we're crazy. We just make noises whenever we want to. Yeah, just walk into a place and look at each other and go, bloop, bloop, blap. <laughs> what did we say at 7 Eleven? We're in front of the counter and we were just being like, map. Map, blop, blop. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody else is around we went shopping today because you had to find an outfit for the zombie disco that we're going to on friday we went to the mall we went to the mall together and we didn't burst into flames you know once every 10 years you got to go to forever 21 bro uh, yeah i i learned the sad horrible lesson today that forever 21 everything is not 10 dollars anymore everything is 25 to 30 fucking dollars what's the point of going there now and i learned that all not even at forever 21 just anywhere that is is the average I, this is what confusing to me the average male waist size is not 32 absolutely not i feel like every store like that you can shop at at a mall or like going in person they are only stocking clothes for like 15 to 20 year olds yeah and they're like anybody over that age will just buy some generic fucking shit online and wear it for the rest of their lives and they'll be happy with it yeah every garment that i picked up today was waist size 26 and or an extra small shirt and i'm like who the fuck is this for my dog i really do think that they that somewhere somewhere along the line was like people over 30 just fucking gave up they're gonna wear pajama pants the rest of their life don't even design clothes for them anymore yeah i don't fucking know but all the clothes but the everything we looked at today was like 90s print or 70s print it's like who the fuck so you want tiny young people with clothes that were made before they were born is what you're saying what you're trying to tell us <laughs> <Right. laughs> like, what are you selling us legitimately the best thing that i bought mm -hmm. was for a woman <laughs> yep you tried on women's pants in the dressing room at forever 21 that oh god oh god that <laughs> that really happened is that one of the lost pigs yes that's the orange lost pig and it's the loudest toy i've ever gotten him in my life yeah after the mall we went to tj maxx and i got all the way to the counter and i screamed out i lost a pig because i was getting him <laughs> a two-pack of pig toys and the orange one was gone and i had to go find it and now i wish i would have lost it <laughs> no i'm just kidding he loves it it's just very loud you have a green one. Go find the green one. But yeah, anyway, back to the mall. We went, yeah, you tried on the most ridiculous pants and everybody's going to see it and everybody's going to see your fucking package. <laughs> <laughs> it's 70 disco pants. Yeah, they're fucking. It's supposed to be ball jet large. They're really right on there. <laughs> it was so funny when I opened up the door and you were like, yikes. <laughs> I know, I put my hand over my head, over my eyes like it was the sun. <laughs> <laughs> like don't show me your stuff <laughs> people are gonna get a real experience if they're going to belvoir right we did yeah. too much this weekend we did way too much way too much i know we did shit yesterday too what the fuck but we found some good stuff i feel like everything i bought is so random but whatever and then yesterday we went to your nephew's graduation dinner you got to meet all of his friends and talked about ufc to everybody I know all the boys there watch the fights, so I got to fucking drop some knowledge on all the boys. I had my phone out watching the fights, and you were just, like, telling them all weird occult shit. That's my job. After we left, they all went to B-dubs and watched the fights. So you could have stayed and drank and watched the fights with them. I can't watch fights with people. I know. Well, then we went... Well, okay, first of all, the dinner was sweet. It was very nice. Everybody was very nice. I'm glad we went. And then... My dad even came down from up north. You know, your dad drove 10 hours round trip to go to the... <laughs> graduation <laughs> dinner jesus that's dedication and he complimented my makeup my dad he he was telling me he complimented your makeup earlier when he saw you he like he gets really weepy now about stuff mm -hmm. and he was like you don't know what it's like living up north in northern michigan and every woman looks like she's been hit by a bus and they oh don't God. even try and look pretty anymore and jessica looks so pretty she put makeup on and she did her hair i have I haven't seen a woman. You know the hags I live with up north. Holy shit. 
I know. And then he complimented my makeup and he's like, they need you up north. I'm like, I'll come up there. <laughs> Bring my little eyeshadow palette. Hook everybody up. That was nice. He was in a good mood today, yesterday. He was, I, I, it's uncomfortable for me when he's being really nice to you. I don't know how to react to it. Well, I mean, to a certain extent, because he doesn't hear very well, mm -hmm. like he just sits and smiles and watches. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If he would have been alone in my house, I mean, it would have been a different story. Yeah. No, he would have just said nice shit to me. Like when he said that one year, he sent me like a Christmas card or a birthday card or some shit. And you're like, he doesn't even get me a card. <laughs> no, he was excited. You showed him video of Toad. I did. I showed him a video and photos of Toady. Yeah, it was good times. So then we went to the crystal store on the way home and we went to the thrift store it always weirds me out at certain thrift stores it seems like there's always one person these days and this is no shame like whatever there's always one person at a thrift store who looks like they just came from like a early 2000s corn concert oh 100 percent. yep <laughs> yep and you're like not even you're like half thinking they're a customer and half thinking they're a worker and I, who i even are they yeah the other thing that kind of i mean again no shame the other thing that kind of bums me out, not bums me out, but like, did you see those guys who were trying on shirts? Mm -mm. Guys just like taking off their shirt, going bare chested, and then taking a shirt off the rack, taking it off the hanger, putting it on, then taking it off, putting it back on the hanger and putting it back on the rack. Yeah. Like, it just seems weird to me. I mean, I've, I've definitely tried stuff on over my clothes before, like, because there's no dressing rooms at thrift stores just weird especially on a hot day when you know everybody's like all sweated out i know well and then yeah so we went shopping today and then afterwards okay i i, I bitched last episode about my new code violation in a series of not i didn't get the violation i got the warning and then last last one i was bitching about how the code guy seemed wasted on my security cam and then i was getting dms that were like drop the footage of the drunk code guy <laughs> like <laughs> I will if I fucking have to, if I get, if I keep getting warnings. But anyway, so yeah, when we, went, when we got back from the mall, we mowed my whole lawn and then we painted my whole, well, not my whole, but a, a lot of my porch. Cause I got a write up for my columns were chipping. And then basically like the ledge of the porch was chipping too. So you're like, fuck it, let's do all of it. And then we did it. And then we, the funniest thing before you say anything else, <laughs> the funniest thing was we're painting the first column on the outside uh -huh. and you were like, this isn't even fucking doing anything. This doesn't, this, and I was like, no, it's making a difference. And you were like, no, it's not. <laughs> I know I was like this is still gonna look like shit and then like one got done and then then like 75 75 cents 75 percent done we stood back and we're you were like come look at it and I was like oh my god it looks so good and then when we were done it really looks a lot better I'm surprised I was hoping when you came home seeing it like driving up toward it to look at it I did I looked at it from corner yeah yeah it looks really cute I'm proud of us and all of a sudden it looks like the crackheads moved out you know nothing against crackheads just no shame. Don't want my house <laughs> to look like a fucking abandoned dead house. But it's getting there. Small things. And then I have to get some like plant baskets and then it'll look so cute. But I got to save the monies for the trip and then I'll get some plant baskets when I get home. Yeah. Yeah, a very productive weekend. Oh, and then when we went to the party yesterday, you were like, <laughs> I, I think it was on the way there. <laughs> no, maybe on the way back, you saw that sign and you're like, you don't want to go to Ziptons. And I was like, what the fuck is Ziptons? And I look over and it was a tanning place and the sun was where the a should be and i'm like zip tans and you're like that's not an a so then we were just it saying, was the worst Zip design Tom. ever the sun in the place yeah. of the a looks like an o and instead yeah. of zip tans it said zip tans it literally said zip tans so then we were just making up origin stories for the word zip tans i said it sounded like aliens in a spaceship like they would get out and they would be zip tans and i said that it sounded like the new brand of adidas zip tans that you can yep. buy and then I, yeah the, <laughs> the adidas zip tans and then also i said it sounded like spicy croutons like you would have zip tans that's the one that makes the most sense it does i think i need to make zip tons yeah like special recipe That's croutons croutons with like sriracha croutons yeah. and then there'll be like a flying saucer and aliens on the front and they'll and people will be like oh those are the zip tons <laughs> <laughs> oh, another mi like million dollar idea just out oh, in the ether the bat the fucking flying saucer on the front will be a salad bowl and they'll be like in it and it'll be like flying through the air that is less fucking flying saucer but it's a salad i could see that i guess dude i'll be so amped if i had my own crouton line that would really be my whole life in the making true loves of my life croutons and dogs so it's a little flying saucer bowl with a salad in it and the yeah. ziptons are coming out of the top yeah and it says let us invade you <laughs> let us invade your salad <laughs> 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 Why are we so smart? <laughs> <laughs>
Oh my god. Oh my god. Bro, that's the best idea we ever had on here. I'll see an Instagram ad for them next week. I know, don't steal our zip tons. And then somebody then we'll get an interview and people will be like, what was the orange story of your of your brand name? I, mi- I misread a sign. Yeah, the worst designed tanning place sign ever in the history of America. Good times. So and then the other day, okay, so you were the day before that or two days before wait. I don't, I can't remember. Friday, I think. Is that Thursday? No, Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. You were supposed to go to the movies with me because I had advanced screening passes for the black phone and you hoed me, but we'll get into that in a second because it was actually exciting and I did allow you to hold me. Yes. But I want to hear about black phone. You haven't told me about it yet. I know. Okay. So I went to the screening all by myself. Could I have invited somebody? Probably. But I just went, got my little popcorn and my little pop, went in the, went in the movie. Bro, black phone was so good i feel like it's the horror movie i've been waiting for for like 10 years it was so fucking good satisfying good music good acting it was different i don't know so fucking good it was so good and it was like funny but like not like awkwardly funny and it was fucking scary the jump scare i swear there was like four jump scares that got me a night they were different like you know how jump scares you just always know it's like oh and somebody's behind the fridge and then they shut the fucking fridge and there's somebody behind the fuck like Jump scares have become so generic and the ones that were in this movie, like there was a tweet going around this week that said somebody in the theater with them shit their fucking pants during one part and on accident and then they ran out of the theater and they never came back and in my head I go, I think I know what part that was. <laughs> 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 this is one jump scare that's so fucking scary. It had to be that part. And then also I was saying on Twitter too that this is the first movie in like a long ass time where the, the crowd like erupted, like they were cheering and yelling like during the movie and it was it was so good. It was so exciting. Like people definitely have to see it in the theater because the crowd reaction was so fucking fun. Ethan Hawke is having a super revival. I know. Bro, he was so Oh, creepy in that his voice his body hit oh there's i think it's in the trailer there's a couple times where he has his shirt off and i'm like is that really his body it was like i was like was it scary body no it was kind of built and I, and it made it scarier right ew ew it just it felt like ugh, i don't know i can't explain it it just like was like oh no but it's 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 like a double whammy though it's a serial killer slash ghost movie right yeah Okay, but don't say anything more than that. Yeah, it's it's definitely. Well, I don't know awesome. anything. I haven't seen it. Yeah, you saw the trailer, but it's like yeah, there's definitely there's that that you just said, and there's one other element. So it has like all the things that we like like, but as a true crime story, kind of, it's fucking sick. It's really sick, and it's not. I don't know how to describe it. it. Doesn't come off as weird or trying too hard. It just like super works. Everything that they did worked. Who wrote that? Do you know who wrote it? It was the guy. Is it a Joe Hill m- movie? Joe Hill wrote the short story, I believe. Okay. And then the guy who drew directed it did sinister oh okay and i want to say is it my emily rose maybe maybe like it seemed like it was made by those people who make like sinister and insidious and all those movies oh maybe that's what it was i don't yeah exactly though but this is by far the best one that they've ever made because i remember looking at imdb and being like i liked those but i loved this and then also there was while it was I don't know what you know what and this happens to us every time we're waiting in line for a screening like why is everybody always so fucking weird and like (laughs) everybody's so weird every time so there's these weird kids in front of me that were like Ugh, I can't even describe them. They were like just like young boys that like I don't know. I can't. I can, literally can't describe them. But they were annoying me. And, were and they the they, ones talking about Joker? Yes. Uh, everything that they were saying was annoying. And then the thing that made my ears perk up was the one goes, "Well, Jared Leto is my favorite Joker ever." So, and then my insides died. And then right after that happened, this guy pushed past them to throw something in the garbage, and he goes, "Excuse me, guys, just throwing away my hopes and dreams." And then <laughs> I'm like, "What is?" I looked down at my phone. I'm like, "What is?" Going Oh my god can i go in the theater it's so weird out here it was fun but i wish you were there but anyway why don't you tell everybody why well i i you know what horror movie i watched what i watched on amazon i watched i tried to watch the last kind of newish paranormal activity movie uh which one like the amish one i don't think i watched that yet i think i wanted i think it's on my watch list because it doesn't have anything to do with the other ones right no it has nothing to do with any of them it's called like paranormal activity i think next of kin or something like that no i don't think i watched that is it good i think those movies are always way too long aren't most of them like an hour and 20 minutes i think that's too long for those type of found footage movies and it's one of those found footage movies where it's fine and i kind of enjoyed some of it and but it's one of those movies where 
you know, obviously it's supposed to be found footage. And at some point in the movie, they're just like, well, we'll just make a movie. Because there's no way anybody could be filming what you're seeing on the screen. Yeah, I think I remember thinking that when I watched like the trailer that this one doesn't even look that found footagey. Well, and then it's that thing where it's like spoilers, I guess, not spoilers. But like when you get to the end of the film, you're like, how how did they get any of this footage to show me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> you see like cameras destroyed and then you're like, oh, wait, that, but I'm watching the footage that came from that camera that just smashed against that wall. <laughs> can't think too much you'll ruin horror movies for yourself i know so i was gonna go to black phone with you but wednesday i got a direct message from paul Shear, who is like one of my favorite like podcaster like i've been listening to how did this get made their podcast ever since it started and we follow each other on twitter and stuff and he said hey can you be on my twitch show on thursday and without even remembering that we were going to black phone i was like yes absolutely mm -hmm. so then and when you called and were like, we got to go to Black Phone tomorrow, I was like, I got to do Paul Shear's Twitch show because I'm his Father's Day present to the co-host Rob Hubel. <laughs> right. It was so cute. Wait, what is Rob from again? Rob has been in like a ton of stuff. Um, I know. I feel like he's been in everything. Was he on uh, Reno 911? Yeah, he did Reno. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul's been in a bazillion fucking things. Yeah, literally all the things. And then, yeah, so then they did this intro of you. And then Paul's like, to, to Rob, he's like, guess what I got you for Father's Day? And Rob's like, oh my God, what? And he's showing him like bad gifts first. And then he has him guess and he's freaking out. And then he go, and then he like introed you and like having Rob have a occult slash alien expert, Bigfoot talker guy was like his, his dream Father's Day present. It was so funny. I mean, who knows how much pre-show they do, but it was so funny because Paul was like reading my bio and Hubel goes, is this John Tenney? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, it was. They were so enamored with you. I swear there was like their eyes were wide so many times. There were so many times where they put their hands on top of their head because you like blew their brain out of their head. And it was so cute. It's so fun to talk to comedians who like not necessarily believe but are open to weird stuff mm -hmm. because there are a ton of comedians who are like ghosts and ufos are all bullshit people who believe in crystals are dumb people who do astrology are morons like so it's nice to be able to talk to funny smart people who are open to weird stuff because i mean rob hubel has a twitch show where he has people phone in with their ghost videos we, we showed some on the twitch show mm -hmm. oh yeah heard about that yeah that one of that person walking in the hallway was weird as fuck i i didn't know what to make of that if it's real it's fucked but if i think it's, it's i think it's fake yeah it was a little too like opaque for me there's a well here's the thing and i tell people this all the time whenever people show me videos mm -hmm. there's a fine line between a video that really quickly flashes something off to the side and then it disappears mm -hmm. that makes me question if the video is real because why did the camera move over there just enough to see a get a glimpse of the weird ghosty ufo whatever on that side yeah like but then at the same but then at the same time if i see a video where someone for some reason has the ghost directly in center frame mm -hmm. i also feel like oh well that's kind of fake because <laughs> that doesn't ever happen <laughs> The thing that always weirds me out the most about ghosts and UFO videos, though, is that, you know, they're like, especially with UFO videos, you'll see some and they're like 10 seconds or 15 seconds long. Yeah. Why didn't you keep filming? It's like people get bored of filming it. Well, when I, when I took that video at the asylum in Wisconsin, I only filmed for like a minute and a half and then I stopped because I was fucking scared and I wanted to leave. Right. But I mean, like when someone's standing outside and they see like a UFO flying around and they put their phone up and they start videotaping it and they're like, holy shit, I think I caught a UFO. Yeah. And then they film it for 10 seconds yeah like did you film that on snapchat like you ran out of room <laughs> right <laughs> your phone ran out of film yeah just 10 second bites uh i was gonna say too i put the link for that interview with them on our instagram at w u w pod on instagram yeah yeah it's on our instagram page if people want to watch it it's like twitch.tv slash friend zone so the episode's up there if you guys want to watch tenny be a big timer with big comedians while i go to the movies by myself <laughs> 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 yeah, but am I helping them paint their porches? Not yet. And then when we were done painting the porch, I came in here and pulled a tarot card and I got the three of pentacles and it said collabos and blah, blah, blah. And basically, and then the last line on the card said, you get by with a little help from your friends. And I was like, oh. It said teamwork makes the dream work. Motherfucking teamwork. It did say that. 
And then I feel like we're just playing our week in reverse. Like, okay, the rest of the week was fine, but on Tuesday it was a fucking full moon and this is what happened. This was my day. Okay, I got, I worked and then a girl who has canceled on me two other times canceled on me for a third time right before I'm going on a trip and I needed the money. So I was like fuming. Then on the way home, I was in it. I was trying to be nice. So I got us both food. And then when I got home, I gave it to you, dropped it off to you. I didn't look at it. I dropped it off at your house, came back, opened it. They put meat on half of our fucking food so we couldn't eat it. And then I went in the backyard because Toad was barking and there was a little tiny feral kitten back there. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to save it. So I plucked it. It was like on the top of my fence. So I plucked it off the fucking fence and it ripped my hands to absolute shreds. It literally turned into a fucking rolling ball of razor blades. It bit my, it bit through my fucking fingernail. It bit my finger. Like I came in the house and my hands were gushing blood. I'm like, what the fuck did I just do? Are you joking? And then I texted my friend who works at a rescue and I'm like, do I need medication? Like what the fuck? And she's like, yes, you need antibiotics. I'm like, great. This is a really great day. So then like, like 20 minutes after that, I go in my bathroom, use like the last like four squares of my toilet paper, go in the hall closet, no toilet paper left. I ran my house completely out of toilet paper. I'm like, I'm going to jump off a bridge. I'm like, this is the worst day of my, everything that could go wrong went wrong. I couldn't wait to wake up on Wednesday and have it not be Tuesday anymore. It was fucking ridiculous. You know what? You, should, you brought up toilet paper. I was thinking about this yesterday. Here's a, what's up weirdo toilet paper talk. Welcome to toilet <laughs> paper talk with John and Jessica. When sponsored, my mom and dad. Wait, wait, wait. Sponsored by Zip Top. <laughs> <laughs> let us invade your salad um <laughs> when my mom and dad were living with me i bought toilet paper once a week yeah that was the dumbest for like thing. three years your dad would use like a whole roll of toilet paper when he went to the bathroom yes i haven't bought toilet paper in a year and a half i never buy it either right it lasts me forever but for whatever reason and i'm always good about having backup too and i fucked up so but anyway everything got better the next day because i ordered groceries i got my toilet paper i got Oh, and I was able to message my doctor and she called me in the fucking antibiotics so I didn't have to go to the doctor. That was good too. And then the girl who canceled on me for the third time then me some money for canceling me again. So like everything got better and then the rest of the week was good. But Tuesday I was like, are you joking? Like everything that happened was a joke. I think it's funny that you as a dog person had no forewarning that kittens are spinning tribbles of razor blades. Bro, it was... Was a ne- I could not believe the force with which it bit down on my finger. It was excruciating. I was screaming in my backyard. It like went so far into my fucking finger that it still hurts. It was so ridiculous. And then, and then my brain, it was kind of like I was like frozen in time. So I thought once it started, it, you know, when the, you, there's like an animal and it like thrashes and it sees if it can get away and then it, it knows it can't. So it stops. Nope. I just kept gripping it thinking it would stop and it didn't stop and then my hands are literally gushing blood and I dropped it and I haven't seen it since and then everybody's like and then I told people the story they're like well did you go back and get the kitten I'm like no (laughs) the thing is stay out of my yard now it fucking tried to kill me but I'd love that kittens are when you look at a kitten like especially little baby kitty kitties when you look at them they're like hi I'm a cute Mm -hmm. and then when you touch them they're like and I'm a demon It looks so chill. I literally thought I was going to pluck it and then like cradle it into the crook of my arm and just walk it in the house like we were best friends. It literally lost its fucking mind. There's, and then, it's no, so and funny it, because it they are literally like a little baby kitten is like, help, 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 yes. help. And then you walk toward it and you help it and it goes, fuck you. And it goes bonkers. It was like knives all over my hands. And it was like, <laughs> like, it was just like, no, no what's the word i'm looking for like when you cut through something and there's like resistance it was just like biting and scratching into my hands like they were butter i'm like are you joking it just ruined my whole hands in five seconds well again as a dog person you're used to animals that have like big thick kind of rounded claws yeah. and you're not used to the fish hooks that are hidden within cat's paws no and it was like screaming yeah it's fucking insane yeah when toe scratches me it's just like a big line on my skin it doesn't fucking cut into my skin like a razor I can't wait to have a kitten. God. Well, I've interacted with cats like in a house. I guess I've never fuck like in hindsight obviously when i was like bandaging my fucking hands i'm like okay i should have got gardening gloves and i should have brought a cardboard box out there so i could instantly put it in the box not think i was gonna carry it into the house because that i didn't even get halfway across my yard i took like four steps and it just started shredding my life away that's a good cat it's not a good cat it was (laughs) cute though it was like blackish gray it was so cute i don't know where it is but anyway i watched okay the web crawlers have been 
uh, and Ali has been tweeting about this documentary on Hulu called The Deep End about this spiritual leader lady named Teal Swan. It is like a must watch doc. Holy shit. I, I watched it all in one sitting. It's four episodes. I started it at like midnight and I wasn't done until like four in the morning. I couldn't stop fucking watching it. She's crazy, but I don't know how to explain it. Cause usually the, these people aren't women. You know what I mean? Like she has a definite, like, like culty energy. Like, and people think, I don't, it's hard to explain. Like she sees herself as taking people's trauma away or like having you go back in your brain and replace it with stuff or like deal with it, right? And she has these um things where people like go away for like a week or two and like get into groups and talk about their trauma and like heal stuff. And there's like meditation and there's whatever like, and okay, so for the first couple episodes, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, even if this is coming off weird, if it's working for these people and they're going home, then who are we to judge? Like, I don't freaking know. So you're kind of on her side for a while and then it goes so weird. And anybody who talks against her or goes against her, she gets so fucking mean. Like, she just switches. It's so scary. And the craziest part is you think that, like, they're ju just doing this doc or whatever. But I think she, like, asked for it to be done. Like, this was her idea. And then she just comes out looking so bad. And there's right. nothing she can do about it because it's already done. That kind of, I feel like that's what happened with that Lulamon documentary. Yeah. Yeah. All of those docs. Yeah. And there, yeah. there was another one too with that um Gwen Shamblin lady. I guess for me, when it comes to female cult leaders, like I grew up watching, because I was always fascinated. I mean, even as a preteen on Sundays, do you remember oh. the church? Oh. Oh, Toad mm. knows what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> um, did you ever watch on Sundays like Church Universal Triumphant? Mm -mm. There was this church in the 70s, 80s, and probably early 90s. And their leader was a female minister. Her name was Elizabeth Clare Prophet. Oh. And it seemed like just a normal church Sunday service you would see on your local television channel broadcast from somewhere else. But then she would go into like, she would start channeling. And she would go, she would drop into that thing where she would just be speaking really fast in a monotone voice voice and she'd be like and everyone in the universe should know that the god is out there and god is looking at us and god should talk to us and blah, blah, blah. and like it would just go on and i was always fascinated by it and then i found out later when i started reading about them as i got older that like they were using all the money to build like a city for after the apocalypse and they were telling everybody like the end of the world was coming and Dang. so i guess female cult leaders have always interested me because they don't seem to be as prevalent as male cult leaders but they are definitely out there and they are just as fucking weird yeah this one you reminded me of parts in this one too because she started as like a youtube person she would she'd make almost like youtube meditation videos or like self-help videos right and then she got into doing like live events and she reads people kind of and yeah that's the thing she's a psychic too so she like reads people or tries to tell them what their problems are so then at these um camp outs or whatever she has like these gatherings that people come to she has people do like i don't even know what it's called like okay so it'll be let's say there's three people it'll be and they're strangers they're not her so one of the other people in the group they'll go do you consent to being this person's relative that hurt them in that time and the person will go yeah and then they'll they'll like instantly like dip into this state of unconsciousness where they're like kind of like in ghost where Oda May says that oh Patrick Swayze can use our body but they're all doing that it's like you need training for that you can't just do that you just got here like you don't know how to do that somebody didn't just jump into you it's fucking crazy yeah that's weird it's a crazy ass doc dude I wish it was long Longer. It was wild. And she, and it, like, yeah, how you were saying, like, women, I don't know why they're different, but like, she could be so nice. And then, like, her face, like, she would get in fights with people. She would swear at people. Like, she, she switches on a dime and it was so fucking scary. That's the thing with Elizabeth Glare Prophet. She would do this thing where it seemed like a normal Sunday service, yeah. but then, like, her whole face and demeanor changes. And you're like, oh, something is wrong. That's how it was. I know. And in, in like a weird narcissistic way, too. And there was this one part, okay, this one, like, and then, okay, in these groups, when somebody is there and they don't quite believe everything that she's saying, if they speak out, she gets so fucking crazy. So this one guy asked, he's like, I was just wondering who you look up to. And she's like, nobody. And he's like, what, how could you not look up to anybody? And she's like, how do you think that I would have to? If I believe that I'm the best at doing what I do, why would I look up to anybody? Why would anybody be better than me? And she was dead serious. She's like, it's something ingrained in you that would make you think that I need somebody above me. And I was like, Ugh. and the way she's saying it, like your heart freezes. You're like, oh my God, I wish I could just like crawl into a little <laughs> hole for this guy. Like, <laughs> right. Fucking, it's such a good watch, dude. She's crazy. And her, her Instagram is still up. Like she's still doing shit, but oh, but I, there's a big plot twist to there's like trigger warning suicide stuff and trigger warning child abuse stuff but basically you know, 
Go ahead. I was going to say, do you know that really recently there was like a woman that came forward that was pretty much trying to start a UFO cult? No, where? Oh, in the United States, like this within the past like two years, this woman showed up and she was calling herself Anya. And she said that she had worked for the government and she had been taken out to this guy's house near the mountains and went underground and talked to aliens and she like held a press conference in Washington DC that she was going to take people to the underground alien base and she was like it was like she's on Twitter right now and she preaches like love and light but then also that she's the only one that talks to aliens and then of course you know it came out that like she went out to that guy's house and smoked a bunch of pot and had to have an ambulance called and like that's when she thinks she saw the aliens and it just fell apart really quick but she's still on twitter i can't wait till a doc comes out about that lady it's a it, there's probably one to be made for sure Totes. but that woman that i was just talking about mm -hmm. she seems to have some like have some kind of difficulty yeah and of course people are willing to take advantage of that and make money off of it yeah the teal swan thing too there's two other problematic things that i just completely forgot about but one i won't say because it's like the essence of the whole doc but yeah she gets a little weird at the end too because like stuff starts falling apart for her kind of and she like can't handle it and then she's like i'm trying to tell people how to solve their own problems and i can't even solve my own and then she just starts like spiraling i'm like Ugh. yeah it's a lot my thing with again back to cult leaders like it always seems to me like female cult leaders are interesting to me because they switch they go from like oh she's okay to oh she's there's something not okay that's all I want. male cult leaders are always like there's something not right with this guy yeah from the get-go yeah from from the start i know <laughs> and she's like very pretty too in my opinion and there was a lot of that oh well people just come at me because i'm like beautiful or whatever you know what i mean like that energy i'm like i don't yeah. think that's why actually but i don't know it was a really good watch anyway again it's called the deep end and it's on hulu and i'll probably watch it again because it was fucking crazy I read the other day that Nicole Kidman is supposed to make a movie here in Holland, Michigan, and it's a horror movie, and it's called Holland, Michigan. <laughs> That's the name of the movie. That's the name of the movie? Yes, and it's apparently a dark comedy, and she's supposed to produce and star in it. Well, well that sounds great. I'm kind of into it. Toad is literally climbing on my back right now to get the orange pig. I had to take it away. It's too loud. It's too loud. It's too loud. Do you, okay, I gotta tell you this other weird fat rant. Ah, Toady, get down. I gotta tell you this other rant. <laughs> Random fact that I read last night because I was trying to research my trip. So there's this haunted hotel in Flagstaff, Arizona called the hotel. I think it's Mont Vista or I don't think it's Monte Vista, right? Maybe Monta. Yeah, Monta Vista. I don't know. And it was saying like weird facts and like people have stayed there. So it said Mary Costigan was the second woman in the world to be granted a radio broadcasting license in 1927. And she's from from Detroit, Michigan. I thought that was cute. And it said, so yeah, so where she broadcasted from was the hotel. And the hotel has been in Casablanca, your favorite movie that you always talk about. And Forrest that you've Gump, never seen. That I've never seen. And Forrest Gump was filmed, parts of it filmed there. But then also the cutest part was, okay, it had like super generic looking hotel listings and it'd be like, here's the bed, here's the blah, blah, blah. Here's the things in the room. So at the bottom of one of the listings, it said, there are haunted rooms available in this style. And I was like, sick. They know how to appeal to me in my brain. And then the next listing, it said all the regular stuff. And then at the bottom, it said ghost and fireplace. <laughs> 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 and now I really want to stay there. It looks sick. And it was saying a bunch of famous people play, stayed there. Like Bob Hope stayed there and some other people. I don't know, remember, but it looks cool. Bob Hope when he was still knew he was Bob Hope or Bo old Bob Hope when his wife was like propping him up on television specials and he couldn't even stand on, like know. under his own power. Have you ever well, seen they... those last Bob Hope specials that were on like NBC like two years before he died? No. There's a Bob Hope Christmas special. Literally, like he just stands there and like his wife sings they're like the bob hope christmas special and he's like i'm jack frost oh, and they boy. just have him like dressed up in like as a like a like a blue elf and then he just stands there while women dance it's really sad dang well on a the website they use like an old picture of him obviously but... right of course uh, i watched magic this week what magic the movie magic from the 1970s where anthony hopkins has a ventriloquist doll called fats yikes and it used to freak me out when I was a little kid because the television commercial was just the ventriloquist doll going, like Abracadabra, I sit on her bed. 
Abra, Cadabra, she's dead. No. I'll show it to you. You freak out. I'm not watching that movie. I think I'm going to try and find my ventriloquist dummies. I have two upstairs. Yuck. Start bringing them to events. Jessica, don't you want to talk to me? Mm -mm. I don't want those. I don't want those. I don't want those. What if you came back from your trip and there were just ventriloquist dummies sitting on your front porch? Don't do it. (laughs) Don't do it. Sick. I'm going to know who did it. I wish you were going on more of my trip with me. I still don't understand why you're coming home. You should have just came along with me and flew to Europe from wherever we are. No. Stupid. You blew it. I've got too much stuff to put together. Like what? Got to figure out how to pack my one suitcase that I take with me. Yeah, you think I, I'm going to know how to pack for three and a half, four weeks? I don't even know what I'm doing. I haven't even started. I can't wait for people to see that I'm going to be gone for over two weeks and take one suitcase with me. I know. You are. And one of those pairs of pants in the suitcase you can't ever wear again. <laughs> I mean, you could. I mean, I guess I could. You could. I came home and did a fashion show for myself. Yeah, I bet. Do you find any shirts to go with them? You know, I was looking at it, and those pants with just like a normal shirt unbuttoned looks yeah, like, almost fine. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like people used to wear beaters, too. You could just wear a beater. I feel like I need to go to a thrift store and buy a shirt that's just a little too small for me. Because I feel like in the 70s, everything was skin tight on people. Mm-hmm. They were all yeah. about seeing, like, like you were saying, like, they were all about seeing the bulge. Yeah. Seeing yeah. that throb down below. Ew. Just Don't. watching your pulse in your penis. You're so gross. <laughs> I thought you are going to get kicked out of You're never going to get invited to these events again. There are... <laughs> There are families there. Nobody needs to see your fucking bulge. I told you, what if I go and buy a kielbasa and put it in my pants? On I the told you, the dance? Vito. Vito. <laughs> I said, absolutely not. I said, socks is funny. A fucking legit sausage gross. <laughs> gross. Also, I'm reminded that there is a really cool surprise that you're going to be really excited about waiting for you at Belvoir. There is? And I'm not telling you what it is. Oh, you're not supposed to know surprises that I don't know. I already know something and you're gonna love it. All right, fine. You're never gonna guess. I'm not even gonna try. I know. I just wanted to torture you. You only have to wait till like Thursday or Friday anyway. I think that's it. I think that's about it. I'm gonna watch Godzilla Godzilla movie. Okay. I thought he was biting my grass cutting shoes. I don't know what to have for dinner. There's nothing in the house really to eat. Adeline cuisine. I think I'm gonna slice up some slice up and fry some tofu. That's cute. Uh, perfect on time <laughs> he's just having a combo with you right now <laughs> with, that with sounds good. the lost pig beep, beep, beep. the squeakiest pig i've ever bought in my life <laughs> it's so small oh my god toes bro it's so tiny the whole pig fits in his mouth so he just like chomps on it and makes all of the squeaks <laughs> ridiculous that's the cue. That's the cue. It's everybody's going to meet him on the road trip. Oh He's going to tear, tear around Belvoir like a psycho. Yes, he is. All right. All right. Good talk. Good day. Good work. Well, I got lots of work done. I'll get some rest. I know. I still paint all of my hands. Jeez, right. Toad. Did you see that comic that somebody on Twitter tweeted to me today that was like a, I think it was, what's the famous, you know the, I can't fucking talk. Anyway, so it was like a picture of a dog in a control booth, and then there was a dog in like the recording room with a guitar, and then there was the guy doing the producing underneath it. It says, needs more squeaker. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this toad. I'm like, that's toad behind the production board while we're recording the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Toady. Okay, I'm done because I hate it. I know. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm sorry. You gotta right. wait. I'll talk to you later. Say bye, dog. Say bye, dog. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>